Welcome to the video on Buffer Solutions. So our aims for this video are to be able to describe what a buffer solution is and how it works, calculate the pH of a buffer solution and calculate the new pH of a buffer solution after the addition of an acid or a base. So what is a buffer solution? So a buffer solution is a solution that will resist the change in pH when small amounts of acid or alkali are added to it. So if we add some acid, the pH won't change by a significant amount. If we add some alkali to this solution, the pH won't change by a significant amount. So it's, but it's important you realise it's only a small amount of acid. If you add lots and lots of acid, then it will change eventually. So how does this work? So to explain how it works, you've got to remember that a, pH, uh, a buffer solution is... Um, a solution is set up by adding a weak acid to a strong alkali and it's the equilibrium that the weak acid is in that gives a buffer solution this property. So remember that a weak acid um, partially associates and that means that the weak acid which we'll say is HX in this case is an equilibrium with H plus and X minus. So what we've got to think about is what happens when we add a little bit of acid or a little bit of alkali. So what we'll start with is acid. So if we're adding acid to this um, this solution, then essentially we're adding H+. If we increase the concentration of H+, in this solution, what the equilibrium will do is it will react by shifting to the left. Um, so equilibrium will shift left to oppose the increase in concentration of H+. Now if this happens, then the, uh, this, the following ratio, or the following division, Hx over x minus, will stay constant. Now the reason why that's important is down to the idea of how we calculate the pH of buffer solution. So the way we calculate the pH of buffer solution is we use the following expression, that Ka equals H plus times X minus over HX. Now to work out pH, remember we need to know the concentration of the H plus. So we need to rearrange this expression. And if we rearrange it to get H plus by itself, we get H plus equals Ka times first HX to get rid of that division and then divide it by x minus to get h plus by itself. So if this number stays constant, then h plus will always equal a, a multiple of ka if this number stays constant. So if this number stays constant, then that means the concentration of h plus will stay constant, which means that the pH will stay constant. So now if we start thinking about alkalis, if we add an alkali to this, um, to this buffer solution, what we're then doing is adding OH-. Now OH- will react with the H plus first. So OH- reacts with H plus. And what that means is that the equilibrium will therefore shift to the right this time to replace the lost H+. Plus. So equilibrium shifts right to replace the lost H+. Plus. You must say why it's shifting right. And then therefore the Hx over X- minus will stay constant. And again the, the pH stays constant for the same reason as before as for the acids. So how do we actually calculate the pH of a buffer solution? So I'm going to just give you a general example uh, with no numbers. I'll just give you the steps and then I'll show you how to use the steps in an example uh, on the next slide. So I'm going to set up a simple buffer solution. So HX is our weak acid plus NaOH, which is our um, base, goes to make a salt, NaX plus water, H2O. Okay, And basically what you need to use is the Ka expression. And so you'll be given the Ka value for this Hx, this weak acid, and the Ka expression is Ka equals H plus times X minus over 
pH x. Now to work out pH, we're always trying to find H plus. So what we're trying to do is rearrange this so what you get is H uh, sorry H plus equals K A times H x over x minus. And that's just rearranging this equation. So first we times by H x and then we divide by x minus to get H plus by itself. So the first step here is we need to know um, the concentration of Hx and the concentration of x, x minus once these two have reacted together. So the first thing we do is um, calculate the number of moles of Hx and x minus that have been added together. Then we um, we calculate number of moles of NaX and HX after reaction. Now what you'll find is that the um, HX is in excess up here, so all of the NaOH will react and will make some NaX and the HX. The reason why that's important is then you just plug those moles into this expression. So X minus is actually this, the number of moles of NaX. So this number goes in here, and the number of moles of Hx goes in the top like that. Now the expression does state that it should be concentration of Hx and concentration of X minus, but because you're dividing a concentration by a concentration, then it doesn't matter if we use moles or concentration, the ratio of these two will be the same. Because to work out concentration, we're just going to be dividing by a volume. And we're going to be dividing by the same volume for Hx as x minus. So those volumes will just cancel out. So in this situation only, no other situation, this situation only, you can use number of moles for the concentrations instead. Um, and that makes life a little bit easier because it takes out one of our steps. Um, and then, so you put these numbers into the expression and so you work out H plus and therefore you can work out pH using pH equals minus log of H plus. So here's an example of a buffer solution question. You'll see that you're given a Ka, expression, a Ka number um, and asks you to work out the pH of the buffer solution when 10 centimeters cubed of 0.1 mol pm cubed potassium hydroxide, that's our base, is added to 25 centimeters cubed of 0.410 mol pm cubed of ethanoic acid. So notice that is a weak acid. So the first thing we always do is write out um, the equation. So ethanoic acid is CH3COOH, adding that to potassium hydroxide. And what we'll make is a salt, ch 3 COOK plus water H2O. So the first thing we do is we need to work out how many moles of each thing are reacting. So the number of moles of CH3COOH will be 25 times 0 0.410 divided by 1000. So moles times conch divided by 1000. I'm not going to write out that, I'm just going to write out the number of moles underneath um, the CH3COOH. So 25 times 0 0.410 divided by 1000 equals 0.01025 and we've got to work out number of moles of KOH so that's going to be 10 times 0.1 divided by 1000 um, so that will equal 0.001 and that's how many moles of each of these we're adding together now we've got to work out how many moles of each we have at the end so at the end um, after these are reacted what we'll get is no moles of KOH because that is not in excess and what we'll get over here is 0 0.01025 minus 0 0.001 because 0 0.001 moles of this is going to react with the 0 0.001 moles of potassium hydroxide so that equals 0 0.00925 on the other side we get 0 0.001 moles of the salt and 0 0.001 moles of the water. Now the water is irrelevant, we're not going to use that in our calculation. What we do need is number of moles of salt and the moles of acid that are left over. We then use our Ka expression, so Ka 
equals um, H plus times by the concentration of um, of the salt CH3COO minus divided by the concentration of the acid which is concentration of CH3COOH we've then got to rearrange that to get H plus by itself so what that will rearrange to is H plus equals Ka times the concentration of the acid on the top because we're going to times by that first to get rid of that division CH3COOH divided by the concentration of the salt on the bottom because we've got to divide by that to get H plus by itself CH3COO minus so then we've got to just plug the numbers in so this number here even though it's a number of moles, remember it doesn't matter in this case, we can use number of moles in place of the concentration because remember that the volumes that we'll have to divide by will cancel out by the fact we're dividing the two concentrations. So we're going to put this number of moles in for the salt and this number of moles in for the acid and work out our H+. So H+, plus, concentration of H+, plus, sorry, is going to equal... K value, which is in the question, 1.74 times 10 to the minus 5. Times by um, number of moles of acid, 0 0.00925, divided by number of moles of salt, which is 0 0.001. So that gives us an answer of 0 0.00001. 6095 and then all we've got to do is put that into our pH expression um, which is pH equals minus log of the H plus value which is what we've just worked out so therefore if we do that pH will equal 3.79 and there is your answer for this question Here is another example of a buffer solution question which is actually more straightforward than the last one but it did catch out a lot of students when it was done in the exam and it's because that in this one we're not adding together a base and acid this time we're adding together a salt and an acid and a lot of students in the exam mistook this salt for the alkali. Now what you could do in an exam if you didn't know what the um, what the formulae for all of the different reactants and products were, you could just write acid plus base goes to make salt and water. The reason for this is that you will never get um, a weak, uh, sorry, a buffer solution question where the ratios of the reactants and products aren't one to one. So you don't need to worry about the ratios when you're working out the moles. So you could just write down the moles for the acid, base, salt and water because you know that the salt is your X minus in the K expression and the acid is well, the acid in the K expression. So here you can just write number of moles under each one. So the acid is told you that um, the solution of weak acid is 50 centimetres cubed of 0.428 mole per dm cubed solution. So you can work out the, um, the number of moles there by doing um, volume times concentration divided by 1,000. So that is 50 times 0.428 divided by 1,000, which gives you 0.0214 of acid. Then it tells you that salt has been dissolved in this. So the number of moles of salt is 0.0236. Now there's no reaction here, because all you've done is dissolved salt in the acid. There's no base to react. Um, and so now you just go straight to your Ka expression. So Ka equals H plus in this case times y minus over um, h y but if you wanted to you could say ka equals h plus times concentration of salt over concentration of acid if you wanted to that makes things easier so h plus is going to equal ka times the concentration of the acid over the concentration of the salt but remember we don't have to use concentrations in this case just use number of moles so that's going to equal 1.35 times 10 to the minus 5 
time, which is what which I've got, this is the ka which I've got from the question at the top, times by, um, sorry, number of moles of acid which is naught point naught two one four divided by number of moles of salt which is naught point naught two three six, and that gives you an answer of an answer of naught point naught 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 two uh, sorry one two two and then you put that into your pH, pH expression because that's your concentration of H plus so pH equals minus log of H plus and if you put that in it'll give you four point nine one so P, pH equals four point nine one and that's your answer so another type of question you might get asked for buffer solutions is what happens to the pH of buffer solution after you add some acid or alkali so in this case we're asked how much um, what the pH solution will be after we've added 5 times 10 to the minus 4 moles of sodium hydroxide. Now that was going to react with the acid and make some more salt. So what we're doing is we're adding 0.005 moles of sodium hydroxide um, to this, and so that's going to mean that there's going to be that number of moles less of the acid, because that's going to react with this, and that number of moles more of the salt, because that's going to make more salt. So the number of moles, what you've got to do first is work out the number of moles of each you've got afterwards. So this is going to be 0 0.0214 take away 0 0.0005. And on this side you're going to have 0, 0 0.0236 add 0 0.0005. So those two new numbers you're going to get are 0 0.0209 on this side and 0 0.0 Two, four, one on this side. So these are your two new numbers of moles you're going to be putting into your K expression. So Ka equals H plus times Y minus over HY, which equals well, which when rearranged gets H plus equals Ka times HY over Y minus. So you get equals Ka which was which was 1.35 times 10 to minus 5 obviously you'd have that in front of you in the exam paper that's from the previous question um, so if you look back this video you'll see that that's what the Ka was times that by the moles of Hy which is um, the acid which is 0 0.0209 divided by the number of moles of the salt Y minus, which is now 0 0.0241, which will give you an answer of uh, 0.0017, which, when you calculate the pH by putting this into the um, the pH expression, gives you a pH of 4.93. That's what you do when you add alkali to this. If you were to add acid instead basically you do the opposite if you like, so you take away from the salt and you add to the acid because the acid would react with the salt to make more acid if you like. Now what I'd like to do is have a go at the weekly questions that, to, that uh, cover buffer solutions.